Saturday, May the 13th, and we're going for our first workout since arriving in Egypt. Yesterday, uh, I didn't sleep at all, and then today, I definitely made up for it. I think we slept from like 11 p.m. until 11.30 11 a.m., yeah. something like that. Feeling very well rested. We don't really have much planned for today, so we're gonna go for a workout and probably just chill and relax around the hotel. Even though the vacation so far has been very very exciting. Uh, we haven't done a whole lot of relaxing just because we haven't had the time. So we're going to try to squeeze some of that in today and we definitely need to go for a workout. I have one high volume and I'm going to do two prolific because I need to work out. Makeshift tunnel. I already had a coffee so give me give me one prolific and two high volume please. We were able to bring these into Egypt. We brought the protein oh, and yeah. everything in when it wasn't an issue. Yeah. People have been absolutely amazing in Egypt. Like there's nothing that I can say as of yet to complain or say like anything was a worry that we anticipated being a worry. Part of it could be due to the fact that we were really smart about how we coordinated everything. So we didn't basically do anything that wasn't booked through the hotel. We've basically been with someone everywhere that we've went. So I feel like that has helped a lot. Even with that said, the people here are just incredibly nice and they just seem really happy to have us here and this is one of the things that i like about having prolific and high volume is you can kind of moderate your caffeine dose so if you still want to get a crazy pump you don't have to you know have two scoops of prolific you can just have one scoop of this and then kind of fill in the holes with a little bit of extra high volume uh, so that's what i do so if i don't want a whole lot of caffeine because i already had coffee or if it's late or something then i'll just add a little bit of extra high volume so i still get some stimulant effect but i get the full pump effect Hat or no hat? And you have been wearing this whole vlog. Yeah. So I'm really excited to get a workout in here. Devil in a white dress. I know that you like this. Come here, let me bite it. It was so hypnotizing. I'm still fantasizing. Um, so I think that if you take any amount of time off, it's like even more important to get started with a good warm up. 10 minutes on the treadmill, and now light dynamic stretches and drills just to get my shoulders warmed up. So yeah, I'm just going to start off with push. I'm doing full upper body today, so I'm going to start with some shoulders. We're just doing a machine press over here. I'm going to go like 10 to 12 reps, but I'm doing like three or four light warm up sets just to get the blood flowing, start to feel a little bit of a pump, and then I'm gonna load these reasonably heavily because I am pretty strong on, on those machines. And so yeah, you have two grips. One is on the inside. This grip I find to be just a little bit too front delt focused and too narrow, uh, so I use the wider one. That's a nice machine, it feels really good. It feels like it hasn't been used much. I don't know if it's a new gym or people just don't come here, but it's Devil nice. in a white dress. I know that you like this. Come here, let me bite it. It was so hypnotizing. I'm still fantasizing. Okay, this is gonna be my first working set. Leave a rep or two in the tank on that one. There was like a purpose to that. I don't like it. It's super, it feels unsafe. So 
notice another thing about Egypt, just another little tip. Um, people advise us not to drink the tap water here so you can get sick. Um, so I always drink bottled water. Like we've even been brushing our teeth using bottled water. We were told not to eat the fruit too. Yeah. Okay, so next we're gonna do some back stuff. So I'm gonna start with the, I wanted to do a lap pull down, but they don't have a free lap pull down. So we're gonna do a pull down machine and then we're gonna do a horizontal pull. So some sort of row. For the pull down, we're gonna do like 10 to 12 reps. And then for the row, I'm gonna go a little bit higher rep because I do want to squeeze a good bit of volume into this workout because I haven't trained in a little bit. Slightly higher rep than normal and also I'm going to place my strength so I'm not feeling particularly strong today whether it's a result of the elevation or the travel or I'm tired or whatever it is. Maybe the weights legitimately are heavier here, I don't know. Uh, but in any case, um, I'm feeling relatively weaker today so instead of trying to force myself to be stronger, I'm going to sort of just play to what I'm able to do which seems to be to get a good pump. So I'm gonna Put the reps a little bit higher than normal, and yeah, we're gonna get into the back stuff now. Yeah, so someone's, someone just grabbed the pull-down machine. There's like two people in the whole gym, so naturally the piece that we want is gonna be used. I do a one-arm lat pull-in instead. And normally I do this as a pre-activation exercise, but it can just be a full-blown lat movement. You just take it a little bit closer to failure and load it a little more heavily. Devil in a white dress, I know that you like this. Come here, let me bite it. It was so hypnotizing. I'm still fantasizing. It was some as we're rising. Take you down on my sleeper. Like when my calves get lean and full, they just get like crazy striations. I feel like they're always like No, they're not like that if I like like oh, four or five days ago before I started eating a lot, they would not have looked like that. But I have to be lean. And if I eat a lot and I'm not that lean, they don't get like it. Dang. That looks nuts. Turn you into a keeper. Devil in a white dress. I know that you like this. Come here, let me bite it. It's so hypnotizing. I'm still fantasizing. Yeah. This is my last set. I'm gonna take this one to failure, somewhere in the hopefully the 10 to 12 right range. But if I have more, I'm gonna push it. So one thing I try to do is even if I ain't taking it to failure, I try not to let my form be compromised for the set, so I still keep it nice and controlled as much as I can. So the last one, I let that one slip a little bit. <laughs> All right, so up next, I've got a horizontal row. So this is like a plate loaded machine row. I'm trying to focus on like my mid traps. So I pull my shoulder, shoulder blades back together. And I also tuck my elbows down slightly. And so normally I'll go heavy on this, but uh, today, like I said, I'm just trying to cram some volume in. So I'm gonna go like 12 to 15 reps. This might be heavy, but I'll still hang It's not his fault though, because he has to work with me. So I have like small weights. Devil in a white dress, I know that you like this. Come here, let me bite it. It was so hypnotizing. I'm still fantasizing. It was so mesmerizing. Take you down on my sleep. This part of my last video, like when I was doing when I was doing this pose, a ton of people were commenting on how short my arms looked in that. And I've actually had it measured for basketball. And I think I have a five. 5'1 or 5'2 wingspan, and I'm 5'5, five five, so I do have really short arms, but it's actually, if anything, a good thing in bodybuilding because it gives me that appearance of like tightness and density on stage, and where I have a really small waist, it makes my arms look very full, um, but obviously like not all bodybuilders watch me, so people wouldn't necessarily know that. For my body type, it works well for me on stage. Squeeze. This is a serious workout. Oh. using dumbbells because it's quicker than having to load up the bar. Devil in a white dress. I know that you like this. So guys, we just finished up with the workout. We did get told that there was a no filming policy. Uh, we were being really, really discreet at first, and then we just started snapping pictures everywhere, and we had like three different cameras out, um, and then they said something to us, so that was probably a rookie move on our part. However, we did speak to some of the workers there, and, and they suggested that we speak to the manager tomorrow morning um, to see if we can film, just because I think it would be a smart business move from their perspective. The hotel is absolutely beautiful, the gym was amazing, and so uh, if we can open it up to you know 200,000 people, People through my channel um, it might be a good move for them so hopefully tomorrow he will allow us to film <laughs> is it not working no. oh no let me try my card got the magic touch ready okay you're gonna make this work Damn. 
Nope. Really? What the hell? Um, I extended our stay here through Expedia. Um, so our we were initially uh, checking out on the 14th. Oh, amazing! This has been we, 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 we extended longer trip. if we could. Yeah, it's <laughs> very nice. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much, Amanda. Thank you. All right. Thank, thank you. you. All right. Round two. For real, bro. There we go. Okay, so Jeff right now is trying to regain a pump after our workout because he hasn't had anything to eat. So I have to do a post for PE Science for their uh, for the high volume, which is the pump product. So it kind of requires that like I have a pump in the photo, and we trained like for three hours, so my pump is like starting to go away. The good thing about it is it does work like whether you've eaten or not, which I find to be rare. I find like pump products really usually are only effective if you've already eaten a pretty big meal that day. High volume will, will work even if you're like on an empty stomach is what I find, which I basically was. Um, but after three hours, it's it's gonna wear off, especially if you haven't eaten, so. This, this is good, good. yeah, yeah. This kind of give... the backdrop to look kind of juicy. I feel like maybe if I stood like here. No, you need to be in front of that black thing. The contrast with your skin color on the black oh, yeah? looks so good. Oh, the, the, okay, the black. The snow white. <laughs> I figured this might actually be informative. So, uh, people who are like wanting to get maybe good photos for Instagram or something. I'm a photographer. Um, this, I am by no means a camera expert, but what we do is we use a 50 millimeter lens. I don't know the proper terminology, but it's a very zoomed in lens. So you have to stand very far back and we put it on rapid fire. So we just take a ton of pics and then pick from those. So we might take like 30 or 40 photos and then I'll pick one from that that ends up looking good. I'll just leave the camera rolling so you can get an idea like a behind the scenes of how the Instagram Instagram magic happens. So right. I'll stand like here, something like this. Turn so I can see the vascularity in your inner arm, not that arm. Like I'm sure if, if we were professional photographers, it would be so much easier, but we just go by like volume. Just get as many photos as it takes and yeah, it's just, uh, it's a game of perseverance when it comes to Instagram. Good, good, good. Yeah. I kind of want that ravioli again. Like it's cancer, like yes. uh, okay. this is a small one. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. And no, I was going to get the fettuccine with prawns, so we'll try something different. Yes, this is very nice. It's good? Okay, yes. I'm excited. The ravioli was so good. I just have to get it again. So this is the appetizer. I got the lentil and red pepper soup again. That has a salad with some chicken on it. And then this is our main shrimp alfredo. And I got the shiitake mushroom ravioli again because it was so good. This is what Stephanie has over here. That contrast. It still looks delicious to me though. And I have some veggies. Oh. This is supposed to be pecan nut pie, but yeah. pecans are not in season here. So they had to use uh, walnuts to make okay. the pie. I love walnuts, so Oof. that was only good for me. We're sharing this one. Very good. Oh, it smells so good when they make up the room. Oh, I love Doesn't it. Doesn't that smell good? How did they do it while we were gone? Look what they did to, uh, <clears throat> to our rings. <laughs> do you see, we should show this. So they put our rings on this. By the way, this is this is not real. These are from Walmart. Um, I figured I should I should address this. So um, you haven't yet. No, I haven't. I don't think. Yeah, if you guys were wondering, or maybe you saw them, this was recommended to us just by people who've traveled to Egypt. Just to like kind of bring down the like harassment or whatever for stuff. If apparently, uh, if we wear a ring, people are less likely to like approach her or harass her or whatever. Um, so we just got those uh, for the time being. Um, I was told by my friend May that if, um, even if I'm like a step behind him and I'm like not wearing a ring, it's more or less seen like we're not, it, nothing's official until you're married. Here. Yeah. So they take marriage pretty seriously. Like men won't hug women if they are married. And if the man is married themselves, they won't hug a, a woman even if she's not married. So if he's taken, he will not hug another woman, or if she's taken, no one will hug her. So, okay, or greet her in such a way. Put, point the camera down at your, your finger and I'll put it on and we'll say, she said, she said yes to getting dessert. No, <laughs> That's actually quite nice, he did that. You guys think I clickbait bad? Look at this, he's got a syringe, my competitive edge. Oops, sorry. In the thumbnail. I love Christian though. 
I'm just playing. Uh, that's what you have to do though. You have to do that because if you don't, then people don't watch it because there's just such an abundance of content. My take on clickbait is if the content is good, then it's justified as long as you're not being dishonest, as long as you're not saying like interview with Justin Bieber and it's a workout. Uh, I'm a utilitarian or a consequentialist about this. So as long as the end product is good, if you have to clickbait to get people in there, I personally am okay with it as long as it's not overtly deceitful. I haven't been too overtly deceitful, just perhaps slightly innuendous. In, in some of my titling. That's justified when the video you put in 40 hours of editing. Exactly, thank you. Oh, let's see. Thank you. It's very nice. I feel like the camera isn't doing it justice. Very nice view, and there's a little boat over here just chilling in the Nile. This just came up in my reading, and it kind of just stimulated a thought process that some people who ask a lot of questions about what causes cancer, what makes cancer worse, is a good example of why it's not that simple. Some people are saying that tumor cells or cancer feed off of glucose, so a lot of people are under the impression that the ketone diet is like an anti-cancer diet, I guess. But research, like, it, it's not always like a one-way street, so a good example would be that if you were to suppress having glucose in your cellular metabolism or the lack of glucose in your diet, yes, that would suppress the tumor cells from getting glucose or, and or nutrients. They've also shown that it suppresses the function of CD8 T cells, which is part of your immune system. So everything has a compensatory reaction as a, as a result of doing some sort of intervention. And when you do A, then B happens. They forget that when you do A, C, D, E, and F also happen. So as a result of it, because of it, it, it deflecting the innate and adaptive immune system, then the cancer just took over. Even though you halted cellular metabolism, cancer can find a way around it. Just some review papers just uh, to write my introduction chapter on my, uh, my dissertation. Good. Knowledge bomb. It and go mal. Ah, okay, okay. Stephanie, is this um, you? Yeah, here, I'll show you. Uh, oh, it's it's in Arabic. <laughs> oh, English. Uh, so this is this is me. Uh, so I just, body. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I took this right here. This today? This photo, yeah, this photo was right in front of this. Today. Today. <laughs> That's the picture. <laughs> thank you. Follow, follow. And this is, this is me and her. Yes. <laughs> follow. Follow? Okay. Yes. So you're gonna go to the Canadian Embassy? Yes. In future? Yes. I am going in Canada? Yes. Call you. Yes, co comment on one of my photos if you do. In Instagram? Yes, yes. on Instagram. Comment. So, so Don't direct comment. message me. Comment, because I won't see the direct message. Okay. Anything in Egypt? Call me. Oh, Thank oh you so much God. for the food. It's delicious. Thank you. Bye-bye. A uh, guy who delivered it to us, he, um, he was asking me questions about uh, moving to Canada, but I, we, there was a major language barrier, so he went and got his phone and showed me a page from the government website, which is what he was just showing me. And he said he really wants to move there because he's heard that like the working conditions are better and all that. So it was really, it was really sweet to talk to him and um, just like very nice see like their struggle, I guess, for like this side of the world. I don't know if that speaks to all of Egypt because I'm just not immersed enough in the culture here to know. But uh, it was very nice to be able to help him maybe on some level. I at least told him to go to the Canadian Embassy. <laughs> I'm gonna conclude the vlog here. Thank you guys once again so much for watching. I hope that you liked it. Give it a thumbs up if you did. And I'll see you in the next one.